This edition of Video Insights is sponsored by Avista Solutions, Cogent Road, and Compliance Systems, Inc. Hi, I'm Tony Garitano, founder of Progress and Lending Association, and thank you for joining me for another edition of Video Insights. We always start off our Video Insights with a little bit of straight talk. The mortgage industry has been talking about paperless processing for a long time. Our straight talkers, Greg Smith and Roger Godoba, are going to start us off this issue by telling us where the mortgage industry is today and where it's going in the future. I have to look at where we've come from, too, with that question. And, you know, if I think back to the year 2000, 2001, um, there was just a tremendous amount of paper in most of the mortgage processes at most of the mortgage banks. Um, some of the larger banks had invested in back-end imaging systems and some workflow to start the automation or automation process. But they were really starting at the back end of the process. I know when we looked at this market, we really thought that there could be a huge opportunity if you move the digitization of documents to the front end of the process and began that digital bridge to what ultimately was even talked about at the time as the e-mortgage. And so I think there has been, you know, if you look back, there's been a tremendous amount of momentum over the last 10 years. And I think when you talk to lenders today, and I don't care who they are, um, they all have some element of a paperless process. But some may, may have a lot of paper still in their process, mm -hmm. but they're at least beginning or have begun uh, those steps towards a paperless process. Well, yeah, yeah, Greg, I really agree. And I, and I think if you look at what was done back then, it was a matter of archiving, imaging mm -hmm. archiving, um, to say that I have that loan folder and now I can destroy the paper. And sometimes they did, and the paper might have still submitted. But they didn't take advantage of having that paper in an electronic fashion. So when you move forward in a process, as you start capturing that information, the quicker you can get it into that format, the better, the better off you are. And really the advantage comes if you can start tagging information data from those documents through that process. And it helps drive that workflow process and it actually helps uh, define that loan product. And that's where we're moving to today, where the investors are gonna have the capability to look at that whole loan package every bit of information in there um, to determine if that's a loan that they want to buy. Let's talk about the rest of that in the e-mortgage in phase two of this series. That sounds like a great idea. Thanks. This edition of Video Insights is also sponsored by Depth Public Relations, eSign Systems, and Global DMS. Continuing our effort to hear from you, we caught up with Tyler Sherman on the streets of Manhattan and we asked him, what do lenders have to do to be competitive in this very challenging mortgage market? There's a lot of answers to this question, depending on what perspective you have, of course. But here's what Tyler had to say. That's a great question. I think that uh, lenders face right now um, they're having to become more efficient as an operation. It's hard to compete on cost right now, so they have to compete on either service or efficiencies in their operation. So a big thing that lenders can do today is create efficiencies wherever possible within their operation. And to do that, you have to track and monitor everything about your operation. Uh, cycle time, pull through rates. Uh, it's about becoming more efficient as a company, and to do that, you have to track and manage everything. And once you do that, you can actually quantifiably measure everything about your organization. And once you start to do that, you can look at where you where you should focus and become more efficient. So to me, I, I think lenders uh, and technology can help assist that by putting things in place to track and manage all aspects of a, of a lender's operation. Lastly, this edition of Video Insights was sponsored by Next Level Advisors, and the turning point.
We may not catch you on the streets of Manhattan, but we still want to give you a voice within Video Insights. So send us your questions, and our Chief Strategy Officer, Michael Hammond, the founder of Next Level Advisors, will answer them in Asked and Answered. Today's question is, how often should we update our website? As far as content goes, it's critical to constantly provide new and updated material to your prospects and to your current customers who are coming back to your site. You, know, you must give people a reason to con continually come back to your website and look and seek for more information. Uh, the content should add value to your prospects. You know, do you have new products or services that you're offering? Do you have a new white paper, case studies? Uh, maybe there's a new partnership that you have to announce, or there's upcoming events or trade shows that you'll be attending. But you want to constantly be updating the content to your website to add value to your cu current customers and your prospects. As far as design goes, you want to keep your design fresh, you want to make sure that it represents who you are as an organization, but you don't want to constantly be changing your look and feel. If you do that, what you will do is dilute your brand and the brand that you've worked so hard to develop by constantly making it uh, appear that there's a new look and feel, new color scheme, new graphics. Uh, so you really want to balance, are we giving them fresh content, are we giving them new content, fresh design and, and look and feel without diluting our brand. Before this edition of Video Insights comes to a close, I want to share with you some numbers. LPS came out with its November foreclosure numbers and it's no surprise that foreclosures were up. In addition, those loans that are 30 days delinquent or more measured 9% of the market. Not good. Definitely not good. But with smart technology coupled with smart business strategies, servicers can help those borrowers that are in need and work out those loans quicker, more efficiently, and to the best of their ability. So don't forget technology servicers. I know you're busy, but it can make all the difference. Lastly, our Innovations 2010 program is in full swing, and we hope that you'll enter your company or your innovation. The application is totally free. Apply now at progressinlending.com forward slash innovations and get recognized. You deserve it. And with that, this edition of Video Insights comes to a close. Until next time, so long.